Hey parents, it's Mr. Jim here. This back to school season, give your kids the tools they need to have fun while they learn with Osmo. Osmo's reading adventure, Learn to Read Game is an interactive tool for kids five to seven that help them practice and develop reading fundamentals. Because it's never too early to fall in love with reading. Visit playosmo.com to check out the reading adventure new reader kit today. That's playosmo.com. Osmo, learning well played. Hey parents, we all know that feeling of heading back to school, right? That exciting time for new pencils and fresh starts. But what about fresh lunch ideas? Boar's Head has been going back to school for over 115 years. So they know all about packing the perfect lunchbox with uncompromising quality and all-time family favorites like ever-roast, oven-roasted chicken breast, maple-glazed, honey-coat ham, and American cheese. Boar's Head makes packing lunch easy and delicious. Look for Boar's Head at your local deli counter and learn more at boarshead.com slash back to school. Boar's Head, compromise elsewhere. Hello, Critter Protectors, Mr. Jim here, and welcome to Kids Animal Stories, a place where there's always a mystery and adventure around every single corner. If you love critters of all shapes and sizes, I need you on our Critter Protector team. Join our adventure as we learn about critters from around the world and in our backyards. Well, my friends, are you ready for today's adventure? Me too! Let's go! On the last episode, we saw that Chloe is, seems to be trying to get somewhere and not sure where she needs to go. She keeps hearing about this map thing that seems to be on her back and... Oh yes, it's a mystery episode. So if you haven't heard part one, you've got to start at part one to listen to the clues to try and figure out what kind of critter that Chloe is. There's been a lot of clues along the way, and I think we're getting close to figuring it out. But let's see what happens next. Chloe is still trying to make sense of her new discovery. So you're telling me there's an actual river on my back? Chloe asked the bullfrog. Mm-hmm. Your picture looks like a river to me, the bullfrog said. Well, thank you, uh... Susanna! Old Susanna's my name. Chloe moved slowly back into the water and waved. Thank you, Susanna. You just solved the mystery of a lifetime for me. As she headed further and further north, Chloe started to feel how the temperature was indeed changing. Bernie and Susanna were right. It definitely was time to hibernate. I wonder why there's a hibernation hub anyway she'd spent her past winters in her cozy little spot back down the river and never thought anything of it she had been a bit lonely under the water for so long but wasn't this normal during hibernation maybe this spa would have better food before the ice came or better company while under the water hmm, chloe thought some more about her favorite food she was craving some yummy mollusks or yummy bugs. Chloe is a carnivore, so she only eats meat. A day later, and what felt like an eternity of swimming, Chloe spotted a large log ahead. Huh, maybe that's it. <laughs> Even if it isn't, I'm stopping to bask in the sun. I'm so tired. When Chloe climbed up on the log, The sun came out for a little bit. Ah, that feels so good. The warmth is just what I needed. Chloe closed her eyes and then, when she opened them, a critter was right in front of her doing the same thing. Ah, oh, sorry, you you startled me, said Chloe. Sorry about that. This place, it just looks so sunny and warm. The other critter looked a lot like Chloe. It had four feet, a small head, a shell covering its whole back, and bumps upon bumps, and a map all over it. Wait a second, I just heard a ginormous clue that we've got to solve this mystery. Have you figured it out, and did you hear the massive clue that I just heard? All right, I just heard that... 
Chloe has four feet, a small head, and a shell covering its whole back. Do you know what I think that means? Yeah. Chloe's got to be a beetle, right? Yeah, it's a, totally a beetle because beetles have shells and... Oh, wait, they don't have four feet. Um, they don't eat crayfish. Wait, what did... It, what'd you say? A turtle? <gasps> wait a second, is Chloe a turtle? Yeah, turtles, they have four legs with claws and they're, they're good at climbing up on logs and swimming and they got a shell on their back. Yes, you got it. Chloe is a turtle and not just any turtle. She is a northern map turtle. She looks a lot like a painted turtle or maybe one you've seen in fresh water, but her most distinctive cool feature is her shell. It's covered in bumps and lines that look an awful lot like a map. So that is why they are called map turtles. Wow, great job in solving this mystery, but wait a second. Let's uh, let's get back to the story and see what happens next. So this might be a long shot, uh, but you happen to know about a place called the Hub? Oh yeah, I'm headed there now. Is is this your first time? The other turtle asked. Yeah, I've been on quite a journey. I yeah, I didn't even know of this place until the largemouth bass named Bertie told me about it. It's been quite the mystery. Well, my name is Tony, and you're more than welcome to join me up there. We're, we're getting pretty close there. I love that. Chloe was relieved to have someone to help and a friend to share the journey with. The two northern map turtles ventured another afternoon and soon arrived. The place was magical. It had lots of logs, insects galore, mollusks, crayfish, and even other map turtles. Chloe realized that this place was so special because it's where a group of map turtles met up to weather the winter together. She was so happy to finally have reached the hub that she'd heard so much about. That may be the end of our story, but it is definitely only just the beginning of the amazing adventures that lie ahead for Chloe the map turtle and all her new friends. The end. Great job, you listened all the way to the end. You know, the the winters were long, and although these turtles don't stay buried in the mud and all the way asleep, they stay very, very lazy to conserve energy. As long as the water has enough oxygen, they do just fine without even surfacing for air and swimming underneath all that ice. Wow, that's pretty insane how turtles can hibernate under the ice. Wow. Well, friends, if you love critters of all shapes and sizes, just like me, then we need you on our Critter Protector team. You see, we learn about critters of all shapes and sizes from around the world and in our backyards, and it's up to us to protect them. So down in the show notes below, your parents can find a link where you can become a Critter Protector today. Well, friends, I will see you on our next adventure. Bye!